Hello, I'm Denshi, and I've been looking around YouTube and I haven't really found a proper guide to QEMU, an emulation software or virtual machine software that you can run on your computer to emulate computers of different architectures, or in this case, in this example, your own architecture. So I'm just gonna get straight right to it because I don't like wasting time in videos. We're going to begin with the installation. If you're on Arch Linux like me, it's just gonna be sudo pacman-s QEMU to install the QEMU program. If you're on Debian, and it's going to be sudo apt install QEMU. And if you're on Fedora, it's going to be sudo dnf install QEMU. If you're on a different distribution, it's probably going to be, you know, pretty obvious. It's just going to be a package named QEMU. So for example, on Void Linux, it's going to be sudo xbps dash install QEMU, probably. I don't know what they name, but it's most likely called QEMU. Without further ado, let's list the directory I'm currently in, where we have just one ISO file, manjaro.iso, so that contains an operating system that we probably want to install onto an image. So if you're familiar with VirtualBox, you know that VirtualBox guides you through a process, and during that process, it makes you create a desktop kind of emulation image, or an image file, or a VDI file, or whatever, that essentially emulates a drive. So we can do the same thing with QEMU, with the QEMU dash img command. We can give it the create option to tell it to create something. We're gonna set the format to qcow, and cow stands for copy on write. We're gonna use the second iteration, because that's the latest one. And we're gonna name this image image.img, quite you know obvious name. We're gonna make it 10 gigabytes in size, so that G is gigabytes. So we're gonna press enter, and as you can see, it has made it. So now if you list the directory again, you'll see we have an image.img that we've created, and it's 10 gigabytes in size or at least can fit 10 gigabytes of data with what we specified in the command. Now we have to actually launch the virtual machine. So this is a command I made to launch it. It's just a bunch of options that we have to learn. So the first thing we're going to do is use the kimu system and then x86 underscore 64 command. But that command is specific to the x86 architecture. You see, x86 is the architecture that you're likely using on your computer right now. You probably know that, right? But QEMU allows you to emulate other architectures like ARM, or PowerPC or PowerPC 64-bit or like pretty much anything known to man. So with a package called Kimu Arch Extra in the Arch repositories, you can install more architectures like ARM and all this kind of stuff so the CPU you find in a phone. But today we're just gonna be looking at x86, so modern desktop computer emulation. So kimu system x 86 underscore 64. We have to use an option called enable uh, dash KVM and this option enables something called well KVM. It essentially makes this all run much better. It's better virtual machine emulation. We have to select our CD-ROM so we can load this into our virtual CD-ROM slot. We can do dash CD-ROM and we have that image before called Manjaro. If you scroll up, you'll find that somewhere. But we're gonna just type a capital M and then A and then tab and that auto completes. So we also want to specify the boot order. Now we can do boot then order equals D, and it will just load up our disk. However, I think some people might enjoy using the menu option, so boot menu equals on. So that turns on a little menu you can use to select what you want to boot from. So maybe if you want to run the exact same command again, and this time select a drive to boot off instead of booting off the, the CD-ROM, then you can do that. So that enables a boot menu, menu equals on with dash boot. Now we have to do dash drive, so this selects a virtual hard drive and we're gonna set it to be a file, and we're gonna set that file to be image.img. And now finally, we're gonna set a memory amount, so dash M, and I'm gonna set two gigabytes of memory allocated for this virtual machine. So if we run that, you'll see that it gives us a boot menu. You can press escape, and then we can select something. So the ATA, legacy option, ROM, floppy, drive A. But four is the DVD, so we're gonna press four. Also, if you find a moment, like for example here, we're in the, we're in the, like the grub bootloader right now, and you're in the virtual machine, and uh, you want to escape from the virtual machine, you want to leave this window, you're moving your mouse, you're frantically moving your mouse, but oh, oh my god, how do I leave it? You do control alt G, and then your mouse is free now. However, once you're in the desktop, so if we click this back, and we load up Manjaro, we can just sort of mouse away, and the mouse comes back. Most Linux distributions, and I believe Windows as well, if you're running in a virtual machine, will support this functionality where you can use your mouse and the, the virtual desktop you have, and then leave it, and you know it, it comes back. So this is just a virtual machine of Manjaro running. You can do things like set the resolution higher in the actual virtual machine. So once you're setting your screen to this kind of size, you can go here, go to your settings, and set your resolution higher, so like 1280 by 960. And as you can see, it will apply the new resolution. But 
uh, there's better ways of going around graphics, there's better ways of going around making this faster, because you'll notice, if I open up a window in this, this little virtual machine, first of all, it's already lagging, but things, you know, it doesn't run super smooth, it looks a little bit odd. And if we open up our terminal, so if we open up console, which is the pre-installed terminal, and we run the command screen fetch, right? So that gives us information on our system. You'll notice, first of all, we're using a, a weird GPU, LLVM pipe, which is not the most efficient. And we're also using a Kimu virtual CPU, which isn't the best either. So how do we get faster CPU emulation? and faster graphical emulation. This is not a tutorial for pass-through, this is a tutorial for just faster emulation, so I'm not gonna be covering things like, you know, using a dedicated NVIDIA GPU for your virtual machine, maybe in a future video, once I can afford the hardware, but no. Uh, so let's take a look at how to make this run faster. So the first thing we can try is set our CPU to our host CPU. So I said before, the CPU is like a weird Kimu emulated CPU. So by using the option, so let's go back to the command we had before can do dash CPU host, what that does is it emulates the same CPU that we have on our computer. So if we launch this again, you'll notice that now the CPU emulated is an Intel Core i5. So that's what I have in the machine at the moment instead of the Kimu emulated CPU. So by using the dash CPU and host option, I've set the CPU of the virtual machine to the same one as the one I'm using on my computer. We can also add more cores. So we do dash SMP2 or four or four, you know, whatever. You can just set this amount to anything. I'll just set it to two, that'll be okay. So this sets the amount of cores you wanna dedicate. So, well, not really cores, but you know, CPU threads of your CPU you wanna dedicate to this machine. So anyway, let's take a look at better graphics acceleration. So this is for getting better performance when dragging windows around, or even some basic 3D performance. Something called the dash VGA option can be used to set any like back emulation API thing. So we can use QXL as one of these. And first of all, before we enable that, we have to mod probe to kernel module. So these are essentially little bits of the kernel. We got a probe to get this to work. So let's quickly do that. We're gonna sudo mod probe, a module called QXL and box, not, not like that. It's actually box. I'm gonna change that in the file now. Box underscore DRM. So we're gonna mod probe both of those. As you can see, it succeeded. So now we're gonna run the command again. We're gonna dash VGA QXL. And now you'll notice things run a little bit less horribly, Terry. It's still not perfect. And to be honest, the emulation isn't perfect, but it's slightly better than just using the default settings. However, that is not what I recommend as a VGA emulation. I recommend using something called Virtio, which should be supported if you're using a more modern version of Mesa. So, you know, most computers running Linux have this. And a modern kernel, so anything after kernel 4.4 of Linux. I'm assuming you're doing this on Linux. If you're doing this on Windows, they might be different options, but that's something you might want to research for yourself. In terms of the terminal commands, it's just going to be dash VGA Vertio, and we want to do dash display SDL or GTK. We're going to do SDL in this case. GL equals on. So it's, this turns on the use of OpenGL. So you'll notice the window's a little bit different because uh, this continually emulates the display. So the window will shift around and move and stuff. So if we actually squeeze the window like this and squeeze it to the left of my screen, you'll notice that the window actually adjusts to that because that's what Virtuo is able to do. And you'll notice now that thanks to the OpenGL emulation, everything runs so much better. It's much smoother than before. Obviously, it's not perfect, but this is basically desktop level performance or the best you can get in terms of just emulating something. So, you know, transitions, animations are smooth, something like opening a window, dragging that around, that's really smooth and all that kind of stuff. So this is the best option, in my opinion, for VGA emulation. Also, Virtua is the great thing where the display automatically adjusts to your movements. So see, I, I resized it to that, and now Manjaro's adjusted to that. I resize it to this, and then it readjusts to that. So that's really cool, I love that. So that's why I use that as the recommended option. Anyway, there's only a couple more things I wanna talk about, like for example, the Control-Alt-F command. So that's this over here, Control-Alt-F. Control-Alt-F makes everything 
full screen. As you can see, it looks like I'm running Manjaro for real. It even runs like I'm running it for real, because that's how good this virtualization is. Also, this is able to do 3D emulation, so if I had a 3D program, I'd be able to emulate that here. Just before I ended this video, I thought I would demonstrate a Manjaro installation. As I said before, we loaded the image.img 10 gigabyte file we made before as a disk. So now I'm installing Manjaro to it, and then I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna remove the CD-ROM and boot into my Manjaro installation in this virtual machine. So as you can see now, Manjaro is done installing. We can click restart now, restart. And all we can do here is actually just stop the Kimu command, run it again, and we're going to remove the line where we select the Manjaro ISO as our CD-ROM. So we're gonna quickly cut that out and then run it again. As you can see, we got the boot menu, click escape. I'm gonna select the number one, which is the hard disk. And as you can see, it's loaded us up into Manjaro. So if you remove the dash CD-ROM option, you won't be loading up that ISO file and you'll instead be loading up whatever image file you selected to be your emulated hard disk. That's pretty much it in terms of what you really need to know for the basics of QEMU. If you want more tutorials, like for example, one on USB pass-through or other things you wanna see in QEMU or any other program, then be sure to leave your recommendations in the comments below. I was Denshi, this was a proper guide to QEMU, goodbye.